just for example, like I was in a children's acting class where the adult teacher had me and another 13-year-old girl make out very sexually on a couch many, many times in front of him. And um, he later solicited me for sex when I was about 15 or 16. And you know, fill in the blank, so many different stories like that, either. And it was under the guise of acting. I mean, that's what yeah, he was always. telling you yeah. as a 13-year-old. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. He said, you know, this is the scene you're doing. So, you know, act it out type of thing. And so many situations like that. I I was one of the lucky ones. I witnessed and uh, heard about much worse. But I started to notice an issue with how sexual, very, very young kids were becoming just through, under the guise of acting, right? So I think that's what planted the seed to make me care about sexual exploitation. So when you joined Eric Cochran at Sound Investigations, this is a new organization. Yes. It's a not-for-profit, if I understand correctly. And Eric had done this great work before you joined him. How did the, tell me about the genesis of, hey, we're going to go explore, expose Pornhub. Yeah, well, uh, investigating the adult industry is something that Eric's wanted to do for a long time now. Um, And about a year ago, I guess he just finally got the resources together to form the organization. And he called me and said, hey, are you available to do some undercover work into Pornhub? Here, read this article from the New York Times that was written in 2020, uh, The Children of Pornhub. And it details these underage victims' abuse videos being monetized on Pornhub and all of their struggles to contact Pornhub to try to get them taken down. Um, And just reading about that was mind-blowing because I always believed the pornography industry was an evil and didn't have anyone's best interests at heart, but I don't think I was aware of how predatory it really was until I read that article. So I read that and I said, yeah, let's do it. And this is a complete passion project of both of ours. Eric is literally, you know, self-funding this entire thing so far we haven't we didn't solicit any donations from any like large money groups for anything we just wanted to prove that we could do this so this is both of our babies well you definitely proved that you can do amazing things with this investigation it went viral the first video we were really proud to put it up on our platforms and share it because it was so compelling let's walk through Give us the very high level of what your approach was to expose Pornhub's exploitation of children. Mm -hmm. And then I want to actually watch some of the video with you and let our audience hear some of that video. Yeah, absolutely. One of the first videos you released. Yeah, I mean, it sounds crazy simple. We literally just checked up who works at MindGeek, which at the time was the parent company of Pornhub. They have now changed the name to ALO. So um, we're looking at who works for ALO, essentially. And... We just used publicly available information to find who their employees were, and we thought of a few different creative ways we could get in touch with each of them. And we ended up speaking total, I think, with about a dozen employees. Okay. Let's do some video viewing together now and share it with folks listening. So this is the first video released in the series from Sound Investigations. Um, any Anything else people should know before they... Watch. We watch this together. Um, no, this first video, it uh, features Mike Farley. He is an 11-year employee at Pornhub. He's the product manager there, and he was the number seven employee to ever be hired. Wow. And how big is Pornhub? Pornhub, it, it's hard to say. Speaking of, about the parent company, ALO, I believe they have like between one and 3,000 employees. I don't know the exact number, but they're scattered kind of all around the world. It's one of the leading porn sites, though. Yeah, I think it still stands as the number eight most visited website in the entire world. Wow. It has a monopoly over North American porn in general. They own hundreds of different pornography websites. They do everything from write to shoot um, the pornography. They distribute it. They have their own in-house ads network 
their competitors come to them for consulting. They have a monopoly. It's, I think, I would even venture to say, almost impossible to watch online pornography in North America without giving business or giving a view to ALO, the parent company. Wow. They are the Planned Parenthood of the porn industry. Yeah, that's a really good way to say it. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Are you going to tell me, like, who's in that video of the girls rushing on her face? Like, that would hold it. Like, that would be the loophole that I always, like, I look at that and it's like, that's good shit. Everybody's just kind of rolling with it. Why are they just roll with it? Why don't they say something? Plus, <laughs> much. Sports, the loophole. Everybody must. Everyone. Make a lot of money. You rapists use it, or of course, of course. We've brought it up to the CPO. We've brought it up to the CLO, and they're both telling us to talk to him. And the CPO is especially telling us like, "Fuck off, it's all people stop." Do they know that? Like, shut up. They're like, "Stop, we're not gonna get caught." It's like, what if like, if God forbid, what's the point out about the stuff that they do? They're not gonna do. They don't know s***. They don't qualify. No, I don't know that. Meet Mike Farley. Farley is a product manager at Pornhub, who has been working at Pornhub for more than 10 years. Do you think anything slips through the cracks? Of course. I'm sure I'll sign it. How? I don't know. Because at the end of the day, it's like... Are you going to tell me, like, who's in that video of the girls washing under her face? So someone could still lie and get around it. Because it's stupid, because it's like, I could be a content uploader, and I, the only thing you need from me is, like, you don't need a picture of my dick, but my dick, right? My driver's license, which has my face on it, but that's just my face on it. You don't see my body. And now my videos never have my face. <laughs> Okay, so what's so incredible about this? Let's let's actually break this down for people listening. Mm-hmm. There's people watching this and there's also people listening on podcast right now. Yeah. You can kind of hear what he's saying. He's talking about loopholes. He's talking about how you can't really verify someone saying that this is my content because it's supposed to be user generated, yes. supposedly some of it. And the problem is you have these minors who get their videos uploaded, these children, mm-hmm. and they have no recourse and they're victimized again and again. So help us walk us through what Mike Farley is saying how Pornhub sees their loophole here to a lot, basically profit off of kid children being exploited on their site. Yeah. So at the time of this video, uh, this video was recorded last year in 2023. And at the time to upload a video to Pornhub, you had to verify your identity within the portal Um, And so that included submitting a government-issued ID. And what Mike here is saying is there's a loophole where as an uploader, when their content moderation team is reviewing these uploads, there's no way for them to match a face on your ID to your body in a pornographic video, since many of the pornographic videos on the platform never show a face. Um, He says this is very common. So basically, it's just a bunch of guesswork. Uh, And later in the video, he goes, I ask him, you know, do rapists use this loophole? Do traffickers use this loophole? And he says, yes, of course, to make money, of course. So there are people out there that they are aware of exploiting this, this loophole, uploading an ID, and just uploading random pornographic videos that contain uh, child abuse content to make money. So he says, if I remember correctly in the video, he at one point says, you know, he, I don't know if he's trying to be like the good guy, but he basically like, he elevated this to his bosses. And what did, what did he say happened? Yeah. So he was very aware of this loophole and didn't want to go down for it should the public find out about it or the government find out about it. 
So he sat down and recorded a meeting with the CLO, the chief legal officer, and the CPO, the chief product officer. He secretly recorded it. I believe it was just an open... Okay. That's the way I took it. Okay. Um, Just because he wanted it on the record that he addressed this and it's not his fault if it goes unaddressed. And in his words, they told him to F off and shut up. So they knowingly are operating with this loophole, people exploiting it, uploading all sorts of illegal videos, um, child abuse content, and they're... They didn't want to do anything about it because it would cut into their profits. I mean, it's hard to, I kind of, I mean, I know the answer you're going to have to this question, but I want to ask it anyways, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, Pornhub, Pornhub is such a sleazy company. They're profiting off of objectification of human beings, period, sexual objectification. Were you surprised <laughs> when one of their top staffers admit this to you, so, admits this to you so candidly on undercover camera that there's a loophole, and yes, rapists are using the site to exploit children. Um, I guess I was surprised at the specificity in which he explained it. I wasn't, I hadn't really thought about this loophole or the possibility of this specific loophole before. So I guess you could say, in a way, I was pleasantly surprised about the specificity of his explanation, just because we strongly suspected it was happening. And so it was almost, it was a good thing that we actually got the admission. <laughs> yeah. So you weren't surprised that this was happening, but it's, it's surprising how quick he was to just Yeah, this tell was you. our first meeting you wow. sat here and we only met two times total. So. Wow. It's, it's almost.